Although it was unnecessary for creating the custom empire of Angermanland, King Dag had secured another title for the realm and established the Kingdom of Finland. This move ensured that the Finnish lands would fall within the empire's de jure and effectively destroy any hope for a future Scandinavia empire. But of course, this was not before the raiding and pillaging of every inch of Karelia to the east and a bit of Estonia in the south. Yes, yes, pretty much everything in this realm has been funded by the plundering of its neighbors. Regardless of its means, Angermanland reigned supreme and the High King Dag had finally achieved his goal. For now, the next iteration of the realm appears to be a reformed religion and to continue down this path, High King Dag had to kick Scotland out of the Ossetruan holy site Krontheimer. Maybe Dag is just getting a bit old, but the High King's war tactics were a bit off and the battle for the holy site was a tad drawn out. Nonetheless, the Scots had yielded to his demands and Prondheimer had become part of Angermanland. Now that it appears succession may be approaching fast, keeping the realm together is the main focus in hopes to ensure that the Angerite dream stays alive and well indefinitely. Hello everybody, S. Monty Gaming here and today we continue where we left off as High King Dog of Angermanland. I know it's rare that I've continued a series beyond the Empire title, but I still think we can keep this interesting by reforming Asatru and probably switching to Feudal. Speaking of Feudal, we have the option to adjust contract obligations for Duke Algot because of this strong hook. In the spirit of reformation, I think this is better used to force his religious conversion. Now, given we're getting on in the years, we need to think about succession. Since Sweden and Norway have the Scandinavian elective, I want to improve our voting strength by messing with our capital's popular opinion. Goal being to have our primary heir inherit both kingdoms. How are we going to do that, Dag? Well, that's simple. We shall hold a grand blot. Doing so will give us popular opinion in Asatruin counties. Our capital. Perfect. And I believe a fair bit of piety, which is always nice. Now, I am aware this is going to piss off most of the realm, but <laughs> who cares? I'm old and you can't be mad at a dead guy, can you? I definitely don't want to spend more than the minimum gold, but it does appear that our generous nature makes this frugal decision a bit stressful. So we'll just have to get into the proper mindset by slipping some coin to the important people in my life. My son is certainly important. Hell, <laughs> he's not that important. There you go, wife. And of course, the side piece too. Now, let's get on with the sacrifice. You know, I really wish my Reek's Godi was a bit more skilled. He's going to take a lifetime to convert our realm properly. We can't imprison him without incurring tyranny and pissing off the realm, especially given the human and animal sacrifice about to go down. <laughs> See, even at 80 years old, extramarital affairs are still alive and well. Sorry, that's a sin, Stivoj, and it's jail time for you, naughty old man. Now, I'm tempted to revoke his title, but the immediate relief his 95 gold would provide is much more compelling. Alright, you're free now, King. Gilia is all grown up. Off you go into the journey of marriage, honey. Oh, and make sure your new family attends our grand blot, which has finally concluded. <laughs> now, wasn't that fun? See, most of the realm would disagree. <laughs> Look at these opinions. But check out our voting strength. We've properly riled up our voter base and have pushed our choice of heir into the lead, which means we should crush in Sweden. <laughs> Easy. Damn, with our 26 votes, Anthony V is up to a total of 27. Guess we call the shots round here. No reason to still be pushing Anthony V in Norway, so we'll just switch these over to Dag. <laughs> nice. Okay, with that sorted, I guess we should figure out our next move. Grabbing another holy site sounds on target right about now, and England is currently pretty weak due to this civil war. That's an option. Hmm, where's the other site since we're probably not going to go after the HRE? Oh, I see it now. <laughs> Just blended in a bit and was tough to see. Ruthenia. Eh, they're a bit more powerful than England, so they're not my first choice in targets. I mean, are we even close at this point? Of course, my family is willing, but yikes, we've got a pretty big hill to climb as it appears most of our vassals couldn't stomach a little bit of human sacrifice. <laughs> Does holding holy sites help with that modifier? Oh well, I'm down for a bit of expansion in any case. Now, 
We could go for a county, but why not a whole duchy? <laughs> yes. yes, simple. But first, let's ensure our vassals will stay in line before we go to war with another king. Unfortunately, it looks like we've lit the spark and some of the various religious uprisings are starting to form. But we'll get our marshal on organized levy duty to keep our relative strength as high as possible. Damn, it's getting pretty close and it seems the Swedish Catholic populists are a bit organized now. And it appears Duke Ake is not interested in marrying a daughter to our son. Yes, a huge faith penalty. Hmm, could we get him to convert? Ugh, yeah, these odds are not very good. Since nobody's going to come over to the light side the easy way, we'll have my spy master search for some secrets that we can use as spiritual blackmail. What else makes up this acceptance chance? Ooh, this dude is slightly intimidated. Well, what makes you feel that way? What would happen if I, let's say, executed another prisoner? <laughs> now he's terrified. It's a coin flip at this point as to whether or not he'd accept, so let's just go for it. I mean, look at all the armies we're going to have to fight. There we go. Success. He'll want a favor in return, but... <laughs> There goes the keystone in the Swedish Catholic uprising. Man, our allies had been pretty quiet up to this point. Guess it was only a matter of time before they'd start asking for my help. Very well, but first we must check out our grandson's poem. Time of Legacy. It's a not so subtle piece about life after my passing. <laughs> I guess it's cool. Here young dag, we'll just put this up on the fridge next to your other beautiful pieces. Alright, now where's this war we've been pulled into? Oh, right here. How convenient and small. Okay, let's get a group of forces together here in Akel. We won't need these other guys, so we'll just keep disbanding. Cool. This should be enough. We'll start by recapturing our allies' capital and then go chase down their armies. Who appear to be disinterested in their siege. <laughs> Have a nice trip. Oh, whoops. I forgot about this other army standing right here. I probably could have even caught them. We'll just shoot them over to where they might be landing and see if we can welcome them on the other side. What the hell are my allies even doing? Clearly, they're going to ride my coattails here. Well, Quintus has flipped back under our control and now we can go and hit East Kilt. It seems like the enemy is going to attempt a siege way up here, so we're going to just go right into battle. <gasps> Gila, I set you up with a nice husband and you turn around and sleep with one of our champions? <laughs> I know it's sort of a double standard because I would have defended my sons here, but I'm a religious man these days, so... <laughs> oh, raiders. Anyway, the fight in Karash Yoka has gone according to plan, but now we're getting a little more religious unrest. The Swedish Catholic populists are back and they're angrier than ever. Alright, yeah, let's just bring our troops home and rest for a potential internal war. Okay, so we could grab Religious Icon, but again, I want to see how this affects our conversion speed. <laughs> oh my god, look at this thing fill up. <laughs> it's still coming. Alright, any more? My god, this is a bit scary now. Alright, so 14 years to convert our holy site, and with Religious Icon... Oh, <laughs> also 14 years. What a great perk. Ah, yes, my daughter and champion are still in jail. We can't have that. Gila, you get the accelerated sentence because, of course, your family. Oh, damn. No condition release lowers dread. So, we'll make sure our champion owes us a favor in return. Holy crap. Did this get bigger? <laughs> That's what she said. We do have a hook, however, on the heaviest of hitters here. So we'll just force him to switch to the Asatruin side of things. And there we are. Oh, <laughs> that's just the champion. I got excited. Ah, there it is. A favor in return for his conversion seems reasonable. And let's see. Oh, bye bye Catholics. While we're doing some realm management here, let's see if we can bury some of the feistiest of our vassals under other rulers. Bottom of this list, Count Casper of Circipania. Oh yeah, we'll need this duchy first, but here we go. This guy, our son Noah. You can be the new duke and take care of our boy Casper. <laughs> Thanks. Now, Schooley over here can go under Holfer, but he's a Catholic. 
Might as well get him under a proper Asa Truin. Duke Sterla. Hmm, this may boost his opinion a bit as well. Let's see. He's at minus 69 to conversion. And with a granted vassal. Hmm, not bad. Minus 29 now. <laughs> oh god. Why am I even bothering? I'll never have this piety in time. Oh, wait a minute. Profits minus 50% cost. Yeah, never mind. We're actually there then. Ah, oh, yes, this war is over. Might be a good time to get moving on that county in England. Factions look good, and there's the end of the call to arms. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that. I was certainly aware our passing was close, but, I mean, 69 isn't that old, right? Can't complain, we did a lot with the former High King, and now we get to take over as Legende's son, Dag II, the, the new High King. All right, let's see what we're working with here. It looks like we've inherited most of the champions. Still doesn't hurt to invite a few more to the court. It's definitely going to be an uphill battle for the elective succession, but we're young. We don't need to worry about that just yet. Lots of empty seats on our council, so we'll get that in order first. I'm seeing lots of negative opinions here, so I think we're gonna have to prefer vassals here to attempt to keep things in line. Duke Aki, pretty good. Duke Algut, the Duchess as our marshal, and <laughs> this is kind of sketchy. Duke Helgi can be our spy master. I know it's a risky pick, but whatever. Awesome. It also appears we didn't lose any territory upon succession. I was fairly confident that this would be the case, but <laughs> you never know with Confederate partition. Ooh. Baby's first faction. I'm sure their relative strength is a display bug at the moment, but I'm also sure we're going to have to keep an eye on this in the near future. Is it weird to have a crush on your aunt? <laughs> yep, I'd say so. But this is an opportunity to become vengeful, which is a virtue to Asatruans. The extra monthly piety is going to be good for our eventual reformation plans as well. Ooh, yeah, we're way behind on that now. <laughs> In any case, we need to be in self-preservation mode at the moment. Our uncle, Anthony V, appears to have become the king of Lapland. Apparently, he hates me and is gunning for my throne. Once this updates, though, we'll be able to assess how real of a threat this faction is. We've got potential prisoners, some of them vassals, but... Yeah, our chances don't look good. Ah, my widowed stepmother, Welikan. She'd make a nice court physician. Let's get her on that. You know, she deserves to be happy too, and a matrilineal marriage with this beefy Gustav would benefit the realm for sure. Now that the numbers have settled, King Anthony has clearly struck the right chord with his fellow vassals, and he's got quite a bit of support for the claim on the Empire. I'm thinking we could soften him up a bit with some restructuring. We'll see if we've got any counts trying to stir the pot. Here we are, my old commander, Count Hurlfer. The local duke here is Sterla, who actually doesn't appear to be in the faction. Perfect, let's get you under him and out of the faction. That drops their strength down to 104%. Looks like we have a Count Spade now that we can offload as well. Yeah, no way we give it to Anthony V. Uncle M. Cerny, however, seems somewhat on our side, so we'll slide you right under his rule. Yes, the claimant faction is down to 84%. One more of these plays and we should be under the threshold. Count Inglefer, Duke Algot over here is kind of cool with me too, so meet your new liege. There we are. What? Sterla, why do you torture me? What do you want? You want to be Marshal? There. Is that enough? Come on, let's talk about it. Yeah, God knows I'm not handing you that much gold. Maybe it's best we put our spy master in Anthony V's court to see if we can find out some dirty secrets. 45% chance isn't great, but worth a shot nonetheless. Damn, so many vassals jumping on this bandwagon. Look, nobody wants to join your Swedish Catholic populist movement. Hashtag Anthony V is what's trendy today. Oh perfect, my dog is now run off with Denmark's first pupper. To make some babies, eh? <laughs> I'm guessing that's not grounds for an alliance, right? Speaking of, I think we should make sure we've got one of our own to help in this looming civil war. Oh cool, our half-brother can get us 5,300 troops from Samojitia, and yeah, just in time. The Anthony V Squad has decided it's time to make their demand. 
You know, considering the amount of rulers involved, <laughs> this troop count seems awfully low. Well, you hate to see it. The sad state of Angerman land for now, but times like these are inevitable. Let's go ahead and get our troops set up outside Anthony V's capital, along with calling our newly formed allies to our side. Abhorrent? <laughs> well, that's not too nice. Just get your troops over here and help us out. <laughs> no, I'm not laughing because this dude is immediately asking me to return the favor, but <laughs> look at this change of tone. Now we're impressive. <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. Man, I wish everything was as easy as puppy politics. Yeah, we're not going to give this puppy to Anthony V. Frederick, on the other hand, he looks like a nice little boy. He can have it. All right, back to war. Since our allies are probably not going to join, let's run down these troops before they group up. Looks like we'll catch at least part of them in Kitila. Wait, no war score? <laughs> I always mess that up. Yep, this was some sort of neutral hostile troop. The real war is going on <laughs> over here. Well, we're going to go ahead and try to siege Lapolin's capital. And, well, yeah, I guess we're fighting the neutrals again. I'm so bad at this game sometimes. There we go. Another battle down and, <laughs> yep, no war score. At least our actual enemy is fleeing towards the capital. Maybe they'll run into our troops and we can at least fight them there. Man, I really don't think we can mess with the bulk of their armies. We're going to need to figure out how to get some more troops and fast. Exactly, Dag. This crap is stressing me out. Just let it all go. This dude's got such a punchable face anyway. So it doesn't look like we're going <laughs> to... What the hell? <laughs> yeah, this is the faction war. A white piece though? Where is this coming from? You know, I, I really didn't think we had a shot on our own, so um, I'll take it. <laughs> and we've got just cause to imprison the rebels as well. So nice. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Oh, crap. I forgot I've got some terrible success chance for imprisonment. 0% for King Anthony V. Only 28% on Callum. I should have known this punk was involved in some way. All right, let's try to settle things with our allies war as we're going to need them to stay on our side for future conflicts. We'll just send an insignificant amount of troops just for credit. You know, like that guy that just puts his name on the group project but offers no help. Here, we'll just skirt around and see if we can catch one of their armies. And it's gone. <laughs> All right. Ah, what a sight. For the first time in my rule, I feel like things are a bit peaceful. Our troops are at rest, the factions are somewhat quiet, and ooh, we finally get to go to one of these parties. Oh, it's Frederick. I knew he was the right one to give the puppy to. I'm not sure why it took me so long to realize that the second name references the character's father, which I'm sure is tradition. Otherwise, I would never have realized that Finland's new king is Rizzo's son. Nice, all these powerful dynasty members getting us that renown. I'm not really certain which perk will get us the most benefit, but we're young and given I don't typically mess around with genetics, maybe now's the time. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab Noble Veins to make that easier. And the party's over. <laughs> Didn't really live up to the hype in my opinion. Oh, Vlijende son. <laughs> Frederick was my brother. Yeah, I should pay more attention. Since things have settled, I really don't feel like I've got enough closure from that civil war. Certainly, we can't end the episode on a little kitty party. Let's see, who can we take down a notch? Surely, Callum is always a safe option, but he's technically family. In any case, Duke Ulfkel has four counties. Yeah, you know, let's try and throw him in jail and see what happens. Now, I do worry because this prompt does say that other vassals might rebel, and I'd really hate to be back in the same war that we just settled, so we'll just hold our breath. Ooh, some glory seekers. It's more expensive, but we can get some huskarls on our side. Our golden income is pretty healthy, so why not? Perfect! The extra troops just in time. It seems Duke Ufkel has chosen war and he's on his own. Since it's not going to cost us prestige, let's go ahead and get some Agotia back on our side. And <laughs> now we're vile. Dude, you have a problem. Now that our troops are together, our first target is the capital of Hydemark. 
There's a set of defenders skirting around our forces over in Vestfold, so we'll have our other guys meet up for battle. Oh, they're trying to flee to sea. I'm thinking we should still get there in time for battle. Yep, certainly looks like we're going to catch the back half of this army now that their other dudes have to turn around and come back to shore. <laughs> Easy enough. Now we'll just push up into the mountains and get another siege going. Actually, we'll get a third siege started as we can split off besiegers from Hydemork. I'm definitely not going to attempt to pronounce these counties as I'll probably butcher them beyond recognition. Ah, check out the man himself, High King Dog the Second. Dude, come on, two-star education trait? Could have done better. Let's now take a moment from the war and get a few things out of the way. Our betrothed, hey, <laughs> she's a poet too, is not quite cutting it for our needs. We'll just hit her with the tried and true, hey, it's not you, it's me. And we're out of it. Given we've taken noble veins, I want to grab a wife with a congenital trait. Pretty would be a nice gene to start with, but I really don't want to take that huge prestige hit by marrying a lowborn. Let's take the long road for now and go for Fekind first, so we can really churn out those kids. Are you kidding me? Callum, you motherfucker. It truly doesn't matter who's in charge. You've always got to insert yourself into the drama. Ugh, I'm still shuffling around troops for the sieges as I keep forgetting that it prefers men at arms when stationing besiegers, and we really want them closer to battle. As the soldiers find their places, we'll get our focus going. I'm still committed to this religion reformation, so naturally, we're going to choose learning. Having Theology Focus will grant us an additional piety per month, and that's certainly going to add up over time. Alright, Hydemark falls, and we can start pushing our troops up for some additional sieging. We've got our best men towards the north in case Callum decides to show up, though <laughs> his troops are sort of missing in action at the moment. Alright, 19 days left on this holding, 2 months here, and another 7 over there. Yeah, this is looking pretty strong right now. <laughs> now this is the stuff daytime TV thrives on. Apparently Halstein, the son of my spy master, has accused my spy master, his dad, of sleeping with his own sister, Halstein's aunt. <laughs> I've heard enough. Guards, put them both away. Now we're at 100% war score, but I'm just going to wait for this siege to finish and get <laughs> all that gold. There it is. Let's go ahead and get those titles off his hands now that he's in prison. Thank you, sir. Oh shoot, that's right. We put Duke Helgi in jail because of the shenanigans with his sister. Damn, there's something going on with his counties at the moment, so we gotta let those settle before we're able to take his titles too. Alright, with that, a new runestone to commemorate things, and of course, another ally war. I think this is a good time to stop things. Yeah, I'm really liking how things are going at the moment, so we'll be sure to continue picking apart our vassals in the next episode. Thankfully, this was a change of pace from the last few, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. In any case, make sure you hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next. Peace.